Ali, Mukunda Morari, Rama Krishna Haya Griva. Nashim Havamana, Shima Dutudana, Rajendra Nanda Nashama. Utana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Jasarati Rama Yashoda Duna Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Puranjara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhavana Sundara Bhora Ravana Thakura Matana Thakura Gopi Jana Vasrahari Brajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapala Chitta Hari Vanti Dhari Yogindra Bandhana Srinandana Nandana Raja Jana Bhaya Hari Nabina Nera Dharupa Manohara Mohana Bhamsi Bihari Yashoda Nandana Kamsa Nishudana Nikonjara Savilashi Padamba Panana Dasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivahasi Ananda Vardhana Premani Tetana Pulashara Yoda Kakana Ananda Vardhana Premani Tetana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Yamuna 
Jeevana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jeevana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashuda Das Ko Krishna Yas Rako Vachanamanamora Jaya Dada Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bajiri Bharatani Yashoda Nandana Bhrata Jana Ranjana Yamuna Kira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Gorte Manande Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasute Vaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudir Hayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhakti Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhaviti Naishtiki we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 7, Chapter Number 3, entitled Haranyi Kashipu's Plan for 
Find for what? Becoming immortal. Text number four. Dasya murna samudbhuta. Sadhum no knis tapo maya. Tiryag urvam adolokan. Pratapad Vishwad Irita Tashya Murna Samudbhuta Sadun Nognis Tapomaya Tiryak Urvam Adolokan Pratapad Vishwad Irita Tashya Murna Samudbhuta Sadhum Nognis Tapomaiha Tiryak Urvam Madhulokan Pratapad Vishwak Irita Dasya his Murna from the head Samudbhuta generated Sadumna with smoke Agni fire Tapamaya because of severe austerities Tiryat sideways, Urvam upward, Ada downward, Lokan all the planets. <laughs> 
Ratapat headed Vishwak all around Iritaha spreading translation because of Haranyakashipu's severe austerities fire came from his head and this fire and its smoke spread throughout the sky encompassing the upper and lower planets which all which all became extremely hot there's no purport we'll read the next verse text number five because of the power of his severe austerities all the rivers and oceans were agitated the surface of the globe with its mountains and islands began trembling and all the stars and planets fell all directions were ablaze no purpur again text number six scorched and extremely disturbed because of Haranyakashipu's severe penances all the demigods left the planets where they reside and went to the planet of Lord Brahma where they informed the Creator as follows O Lord of the demigods O master of the universe because of the fire emanating from Aranyakashipu's head as a result of his severe austerities we have become so disturbed that we could not stay in our planet but have come to you. No purport text number seven. O great person, chief of the universe, if you think it proper, kindly stop these disturbances meant to destroy everything because all your obedient subjects are annihilated. Text number eight. Harangi Kashipu had undertaken a most severe type of austerity. Although his plan is not unknown to you, kindly listen as we submit his invitation. It seems strange. O oh, chief person, chief of the universe, if you think it proper, Kindly stop these disturbances meant to destroy everything because all your obedient sub subjects are annihilated. Okay, anyway. Text number eight. Harani Kashipu had undertaken a most severe type of austerity. Although his plan is not unknown to you, kindly listen as we submit his intentions text 9 and 10 the supreme person within the universe lord brahma had gotten his exalted post by dint of severe austerities mystic power and trance consequently after creating the universe he has become the most worshipable demigod within it since I am eternal and time is eternal, I shall endeavor for such austerity, mystic power and trance for many, many births. And thus I shall occupy the supreme post occupied by Lord Brahma. Purport. Haranyakashipu's determination was to occupy the post of Lord Brahma. But this was impossible because Brahma has a large, long duration of life, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Who knows the verse? As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 8.17. Anybody know? Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharya Brahmano Vidu. Right? That's one verse. 
at one verse that the, you get you get these people they have good jobs like Brahma he has a long duration of life so he has his assistant Brahma has his assistant just like Yamaraj has his assistant Yamaraj's assistant is called Chitragupta he keeps a record for him so the same way Brahma also has his assistants but Harangi Kashipu he doesn't want to be an assistant he wants to be Brahma he wants to get the position <laughs> this is the nature of the demons they're very much like that so Bhagavad Gita Sahasra Yuga Paryantama Haryad Brahmano Vidu meaning 1000 yugas equals one day of Brahma. The duration of Brahma's life is extremely great and consequently it was impossible for Hiranyakashipu to occupy his post. Nevertheless, his decision was that since the self or the atma and time are both eternal, if he could not occupy that post in one lifetime, he would continue to execute austerities, life after life, so that austerities, so that sometimes he would be able to do so. Okay. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chaksurantam Vanchaka Upatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Paivata Padita Nampava Nityo Vaishnavityo Namo Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we see the mood of Haranyakashipu. So this is this conversation. Initially it was Narada Muni was speaking and he was describing the Maharaj Yudhisthira. Yes, Narada Muni was discussing with Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to understand how it was that Haranyakashipu was such a demon and how it was possible that, that he could become so powerful that they could go to the demons and take back the things the demons had stolen. Haranyakashipu had stolen many things. Haranyaksha, his brother, also had stolen. And it took Narada Muni to help to get them back. Of course, the person who really got things back was Lord Krishna. It was Lord Krishna who defeated the demons and brought the things back. You can see the nature of the demon. How? They were like Haranyakashipu, he is worshipping Brahma, but he wants to become Brahma. That is the demon, right? Prabhupada tells a story about the mouse who came to the yogi 
And the mouse came to the yogi and asked the yogi, Oh yogi, please help me, a cat is chasing me. Right? The cat was chasing the mouse, so he asked the yogi. So the yogi said, what do you want? And so the mouse said, can you make me a cat? So he said, all right, you become a cat. And so the cat went away, but after some time the cat came back and said, oh yogi, help me, a dog is chasing me. So he said, okay, become a dog. So he changed the cat into a dog and the dog went away. But then the dog came back after some time and said, Oh yogi, help me, a tiger is chasing me. So the yogi said, Okay, become a tiger. But when the dog became a tiger, then the tiger looked at the yogi and he was thinking, Oh, I would like to eat the yogi. And, and the yogi saw that the tiger is, you know, when you are got something very hungry, very tasty, the tiger was looking forward to eat the yogi. And so the yogi understood, he said, ah, you want to eat me? Again become a mouse. Right? Punar Mustika Baba. That is called Punar Mustika Baba again become the mouse. So the little mouse. So demons are a bit like that. Here's Aranyakashipu. He's doing so much austerity, great tapasya. All the rivers and oceans were disturbed. Mountains and islands were trembling. All the directions were ablaze. It shouldn't really be like that, you see. It shouldn't, we don't want that kind of power. But some people, they're, they're, they're so attached to material life. They'll do anything to get the power, to get the opulence. So Haranyakashipu, he was like that. So, Aranyakashipu's pen penances were so powerful that the demigods couldn't do anything. The demigods had to leave their planets and they went to Lord Brahma to tell him, just like 5,000 years ago, Mother Bhumi went to Lord Brahma. Well, she went first, where did she go? Yeah, she went to Lord Brahma, right? Bhumi went to Lord Brahma and all the demigods were there and she told Lord Brahma that, you have to help me, my planet is overburdened with so many demonic kshatriyas. So Lord Brahma didn't know what to do. So. He meditated on Shirodakashai Vishnu. I mean, Shirodakashai Vishnu resides in Sweta Dweep. You know Sweta Dweep? Have you been there? <laughs> There's this island in the milk ocean. You like milk? <laughs> the milk ocean. So, Sweta Dweep. It's the milk ocean, the, the island in, in the milk ocean is Sweta Dweep. And on Sweta Dweep, that is where Lord Shirodakashai Vishnu lives. Shirodakashai Vishnu means the super soul, the Lord in the heart. So he's in the heart of everyone. At the same time, he has his residence, he has his place in the universe. So when there's a disturbance in the universe, then they go first to Lord Brahma. 
And if Lord Brahma can't do anything about it, then he will ask Lord Vishnu because Lord Vishnu is the supreme power in the universe. Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion. Lord Shiva is in charge of the mode of ignorance. But Lord Vishnu is in goodness. He's in charge of the mode of goodness. So whenever there's a disturbance or any problem in the universe, they will go to Lord Brahma. Then Lord Brahma, if he cannot solve the problem, he will ask Lord Vishnu what to do. So it happened 5,000 years ago, Bhumi, Mother Bhumi in the form of the cow, she came with tears in her eyes to see Lord Brahma. And then Lord Brahma meditated on Shirazakashai Vishnu and then the Lord said, you should all take birth. Where? Where are they supposed to take their birth? Huh? Who knows? What did, what did the Lord Vishnu tell them? He told the, the demigods, what did he tell them? Yes? Sorry? Y yes. He said, in the Yadu dynasty, take birth in the Yadu dynasty. He said, I'm also coming there and take birth in the Yadu dynasty. So they, were, they were very pious, you see. So Lord Krishna, is take, he told them, I will come in the Yadu dynasty. You should all go there, take your birth there. And we'll all be together and we will adjust the situation. We have to arrange to get rid of all the demonic kshatriyas. And how did they do it? Battle of Kurukshetra. Bring all the kings together, have a big fight and kill each other. Right? And then no problem anymore, all the kings are dead. So this is how the, the, the arrangement of Lord Krishna to remove the burden on the earth the burden on the earth, all the demonic shah. So here also Haranyakashipu, of course, this was long, millions of years ago. This was in the Satya Yuga. Haranyakashipu was doing austerities to get power and the demigods were being disturbed by his austerities. So they went to Lord Brahma and they asked Lord Brahma, that we cannot stay in our planet, we've come to you, right? Sometimes we can't, they were saying to our place was so much disturbed because of the austerities of Aranyakashipu that we have to come to you for shelter, right? We all need some shelter when there's some disturbance in the material world, you have to have some shelter somewhere where we can go and get shelter from the devotees. Sometimes, you know, you'll be rejected, you'll be put out, you'll have problems, some disturbance, material life, material work. We need to have always some shelter. It's important. You know, I remember Tamal Krishna Goswami told me, he said, Whenever I have any problem, I know I can go to Mayapur and I can take shelter of Jayapataka Swami and Mahabhavana and like that. He said, they will give me shelter. And so like that, even you're a big devotee, you need, you need to have shelter. You know, we all need shelter uh, when there's problems, when there's disturbance. So the demigods, they went to Lord Brahma, they're, they're asking him and they said, can, can you stop? They asked Lord Brahma, is it, they said, very nicely, they said, they, said, they, said, they said, if you think it proper, right? So putting it in a very nice, we're not saying you have to do it, they're saying, they said to, they said to Lord Brahma, if you think it's right, if you think it's good, then can you stop him? from doing all these austerities because 
He wants to destroy everything. And all of your obedient subjects, meaning all the subjects of Lord Brahma, they will all be annihilated. They will all be killed by the power, by the austerities of Haranyakashipu. Haranyakashipu is doing so much austerity and his plan, we, the demigods say to Lord Brahma, his plan is not unknown to you. You know what his plan is. So we want to tell you, just to make sure you know. If you may know already, but still we will tell you again also. We want to tell you what are his intentions. What is he planning to do? So that the demigods have come to Lord Brahma to tell him what he's planning to do. So the, then the, the next verse goes on, I'm looking now at text 9 and 10 and it says, it's describing about Lord Brahma, how Lord Brahma got his position as Brahma, as the head of the universe. Understand Brahma is not just simply a person but it's a position, just like somebody may be the headmaster or somebody may be the manager or something, it's a position. So Lord Brahma is a position in the universe and he got that post, he got that position because he did a lot of austerities. He did great austerities and he developed mystic power and trance. So he is, he is actually the supreme person within this universe within the material universe is supreme, right? We say there's a trinity, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So Brahma is responsible for creation and in order to do creation he has to be very powerful and to get that position to do the work of Brahma first he has to be very qualified. So how did he get his qualification? Well, he did a lot of tapasya. At the very beginning of the universe, remember, he was sitting on top of the lotus flower and he, what did he hear? Yes, he heard two syllables, right? Ta and pa, ta, pa. And he, he understood what is the meaning, what does it, it means. He was supposed to do austerity. So he began to do it because there was nothing else. He was sitting on top of the lotus flower and he was the, first, the only person. So what could he do? So, all right, I will do tapasya. And he did great austerities and he got mystic power and became situated in trance. And then he was able to do the creation. And then the verse said, Lord Brahma has become the most worshipable demigod within the creation because he created the universe, he's the creator. So all the other demigods respect him. He was the oldest, he was the most senior, very powerful. So all the demigods, all the other, how many other demigods are there? How many? 33 crores minus one, right? One for Brahma. So 33 crores minus one, Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma was creating the universe. He'd become the worshipable demigod within it. They were worshipping him. He was in the world, 
but he was given the respect. And he said, he, he says, since I am eternal, right? Brahma is eternal. He's a soul, just like all of us. We're also eternal. We're also eternal beings. We're all souls. So he said, since I am eternal and time is eternal, time is also eternal, for some time <laughs> it's eternal. Not right. Uh, but in the Bhagavad Gita, they talk about how many top topics are there in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita describes Ishwara, Jiva, Prakriti, Karma, and and time, right? Time, Kala. And so which one is eternal? Which one is not eternal of the five? Karma is not eternal, right? Karma. So time is eternal. Time is eternal. But we see, we, we, we see uh, in the spiritual world, there's no time. There's no time. But still, even in the spiritual world, there's an impression of time. Although there's no time as it is in this world, in this world, because of time, everything decays. Everything gets old. Your motor car gets old. Your house gets old. The body gets old. Everything is under the influence of time. And it's just, but in the spiritual world, there's no time. But for the sake of Krishna's pastimes, there is time. There's the influence of time. In other words, there's a day and there's a night. But it's not decaying like what's happening here in this world. Every day, oh, another day is gone. Oh, another day nearer death. Right? Every day, time taking away the life. As the sun rises and sets, as the sun passes, takes away the duration of life. But in the spiritual world, it doesn't do like that because in the spiritual world, everyone is eternal. So, Harani Kashipu was thinking, Lord Brahma has become the most worshipable person in the universe. This is Harani Kashipu's thinking. He said, I will do austerity and I will get mystic power and I will do and go to trance for many births and then I will take the position occupied by Lord Brahma. This was his thinking. This was Harani Kashipu's plan that I will get the post of Lord Brahma. Actually, that sometimes people will say, we have all become Lord Brahma in the past. In the past, we also became Lord Brahma. There are many Brahmas, of course. There's many, many universes and in every universe there's a Brahma, right? Our universe is a small universe, so only Chaturmukha Brahma. But in the other universes, big Brahmas with many heads. So, Haranyi Kashipu was thinking, I will do austerity, I will become Brahma, I want to get that position. And he's ready to do austerity for many births. You know, Rukmini, she also spoke in a similar way that I want to get Krishna for my husband and I'm ready to do austerities for many lifetimes. In, until I get Krishna for my husband. So, Rukmini is a, a nice example of, you see the different, Harani Kashipu, he wants to get the position of Brahma, why? To, to persecute everyone, to kill everyone and, and to enjoy the world himself. Rukmini, she wants to get Krishna as a husband, so that she can serve him for service, to please him. 
So that's the difference. The devotee wants to give pleasure, to please, to give service. Aranya Kashipu wants to get the position of Brahma, people will serve me, right? Everyone should serve Aranya Kashipu. Even the demigods were serving Aranya Kashipu when he became the head of the universe. So this is the difference. Devotee is happy to be the servant, but the demon, they want to be the master. With Ekala Ishwara, who's it? Ekala Ishwara, Krishna. There's only one controller, and that controller is Krishna. Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabritya. All others are the servants. There's only the one controller, Krishna, and all others are the servants. So, and this is Haranya Kashipu's plan. But Prabhupada says it, this was impossible because Brahma had a long duration of life. Right? You're going, you, want, you want to get the position of Brahma, you think one day Brahma will die, then I will become. <laughs> but Brahma has a long life. How long does he live? Sahasra Yuga Paryantam, 1000 ages taken together, that is the duration of how long? One, half a day, half a day, 12 hours, right? Because the night is also the same duration. So 1000 ages taken together, 1000 cycles of the four Yugas. Right? Kali Yuga, how long is Kali Yuga? Who knows the duration of Kali Yuga? 432,000, yes. And so, one, if you put the four ages together, Satya, Trekta, Dwapara and Kali together, then it will be the duration of Kali times 10. If you add them up, the four ages taken together, it will come to 4,320,000. Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. But the one cycle, the Sahasra Yuga, the, the, that Yuga, that Divya Yuga, Divya Yuga means the four ages take together, that is 10 times the duration of Kali because Dwapara Yuga is twice Kali Yuga and Treta Yuga is three times, ah, right? And Satya Yuga four times. So four and three and two and one. How much? Huh? Four and three, seven and two, nine and one, ten, right? So ten times the duration of Kali Yuga gives you the duration of one cycle. Four, Kali Yuga was 432,000, so one Divya Yuga is 4,320,000. And one day of Brahma is a thousand times that. Because Sahasra Yuga Parya, there are 1,000 ages, 1,000 cycles in the one day of Brahma. So that, and that is only half the day, that's only the daytime. And the night is the same during. And how long does Brahma live? 100 years, right? So one day you've got 365 years in a day, in a year, and then, uh, or you, or you can do it by months, you can say 12, 12 months times 30, like that, 360, and then 100 times 100 because 100 years, and you get the duration of Brahma's life. So Harani Kashipu, he wanted to get Brahma's life, to, be, to get that position. So it wasn't going to be possible because Brahma has such a long life. 
But he said, well, if I cannot do it in this lifetime, then in the future I'll do it. I, I will do it for many lifetimes. So at some point in the future, I'll be able to get it. I'll be able to get that position. So you could see the determination which he had. Right? Determination is a very important quality. In the Upadesha Amrita, Rupa Goswami describes six things which are very important for progress in Krishna consciousness. Right? Who's done Bhakti Shastri? Where are our Bhakti Shastri students? Right? What are the six things for progress? Huh? Uttahan Nishtir. Right. So, Uttahan means what? Enthusiasm. Yes. Very important. We must, Prabhupada liked the enthusiasm of the devotee. We didn't have very many other things, but we always had enthusiasm, you know. Whatever Prabhupada said, yes Prabhupada, we will do it, you know. But, you know, sometimes we would like patience, you know. Sometimes you get people, you know, you ask them, come on, you know, you have to become a devotee. They say, oh, oh just be patient, just be patient. And 20 years later, they say, just be patient, give me more time, you know. And one lifetime goes by and, well, maybe next lifetime, just be patient, give me more time. So, you can't be too patient. Patience is required, but you, you know, you can't be too patient. You have to make some progress. So that enthusiasm, determination, Prabhupada said, these three things are necessary in everything you do. Not just devotional service, whatever you're doing. If you're a businessman or if you're a farmer, or if you're a soccer player, or whatever you do, whatever activities you're doing, you need to have enthusiasm, patience, and determination. They're very important. So Kashipu, he had that determination, right? Prabhupada gives an example in the Bhagavad Gita about determination. Remember the example? The little sparrow lost its eggs to the ocean, right? Little sparrow had made its nest in the shore and the sea came in and washed away its nest, took away its eggs. The sparrow was so upset, oh, I've lost my eggs, oh no, I'm going to drink the ocean dry. I will get revenge, I'll get my eggs back, the little sparrow. That I will drink the ocean dry, it's taken away my eggs. So the sparrow began to drink the ocean and people were laughing, oh come on little sparrow, you cannot drink the ocean. But then Garuda came and Garuda is the king of birds and he saw the little bird there, the little bird is one of his subjects. He, so Garuda told the ocean, you give the sparrow his eggs back or else I will drink you dry. And when Garuda gave the oh, yes, and immediately the ocean came and brought the eggs back for the sparrow. So determination was there, the little bird. In Chinese culture they have a lot of stories about determination, right? What is that? The old man wants to move the mountain. You know that Chang Yu? Huh? Yu Gong, Yu Gong Yishan. Yu Gong Yishan. That is a story about the old man. He has a farm, he has some land. And on the land is a mountain. So he thinks, okay, we should take away the mountain. I'll dig up, knock away the mountain. And grant, what, I have more land, I can grow more. And so the old man started to knock at the mountain to take, and he said, no, come on, you can't move the mountain, how you can move? He said, no, he said, I will do something, then my sons will come, and then their sons, and then their sons, and 
After maybe after many generations, one day we'll get the, the land will be flat. There will be no more mountain. And so this this China they have these kind of sayings to encourage people, you know, to be determined, you know. You have to do it, you have to be determined. Very important. So Harangi Kashipu, his determination, of course, is the mode of ignorance because he's determined to do harm to people, not to do good. So there's quality in everything, quality in determination. Somebody's determination is to get name and fame and somebody else is determined, they just simply want to please, to do service for others, for the benefit of others. Okay, any question? Today, of course, is very auspicious day. Srila Prabhupada uh, took sannyas today. He took sannyas in Mathura from, uh, from uh, Kishva Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. Kishva Maharaj. His god brother. Was Keshava Maharaj, Bhakti Pragna Keshava Maharaj. So, Prabhupada took sannyas, he had left home and, well, he had told his, he had said to his wife, Do you want tea or me? So his wife said, Tea or you? I think I'd rather have tea. <laughs> Right. This, so Prabhupada thought, okay, all right. And so Prabhupada then left. And his, his books had gone missing, and he thought his wife had just sold them to get money or something. So anyway, Srila Prabhupada left home, went off to Mathura, and he was living in Delhi and sometimes in Vrindavan. And, uh, Sometimes he would get a dream and the spiritual master was telling him that you should move on. Srila Prabhupada only changed his ashram with the greatest reluctance. He did not do things, you know, spontaneously or prematurely, but it was only with great care and he thought about it and, you know, Prabhupada's spiritual master was coming in his dream and telling him, you know, you should take sannyas. So he, he checked with his god-brother. He checked with uh, Keshva Maharaj, who was one of his good friends, a good god-brother, and he asked him, what do you think? And he said, yes, you should do it. And so there was a ceremony and that Prabhupada took sannyas along with another man. There was another elderly man. The picture was there. They took a photo of it. I don't know how they managed to get a photo of it those days. Anyway, it was, what was the year? 1950, was it? 19... I'm not sure of the year when it took. Anyway, it was on today, the Vishwaru Mahotsava. And today, of course, is also this Bhadra Purnima. Let's see, anybody buys a set of books today? Or if you give a set of books to someone, you can go back to Godhead. So, huh? 1959, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if we can get somebody to buy a set, yeah, that's why the books are on the altar today. Because if we can distribute a set of Bhagavatam to someone, it's very auspicious for them and for us also. <laughs> <laughs> so, we encourage people, read Prophet's books, take advantage of the mercy. Okay, any question, anyone? Yes, Prabhu?
Well, the family life is only one part of the life. Srila Prabhupada's marriage was arranged by his father when he was a young man. And actually when the father arranged the marriage, Srila Prabhupada said, I don't think I like that girl very much. And his father said, that's good. Because if you like the girl too much, it's a problem. So anyway, Prabhupada was married as a young man and they had five children together. And Prabhupada was doing business for some time and he was quite successful for some time. He had a car even. He was quite successful in those days. And uh, however, as he got older, somehow things changed and the business also failed. Uh, Srila Prabhupada moved. He was at one point, he, he, the business was there in a place called Prayagraj, Allahabad. Oh, Allahabad, yeah. And then they, they came back to Calcutta. He was staying in Calcutta and business failed. Some, it probably had to travel a lot for the business, but it didn't work out. So Prabhupada was pretty much in retirement when it happened. He was not so young. And the children had grown up, some were married, maybe the youngest ones were not yet married yet. But the others, the elder ones were all married. So, Prabhupada was arranging programs in the home. He was having people come to his home and he would, he would give talks, give lectures and so on. But the wife was not interested. She didn't take much interest at all. You know, she was not against, but she was just not very interested what he was doing. You know, he was fully dedicated. He was, he began his magazine in 1944, Back to Godhead magazine in 1944. So he was still in family life at that time. And he was trying to distribute the magazine also. So the, the wife could not understand why you do all these things, why don't you just make more money, you, you know, make, do business and make money. She couldn't understand the significance of what he was doing, writing and publishing books on spiritual knowledge. She thought, just bring money, you know, give money, get money, give the money. So Prabhupada was more thinking about spiritual, the spiritual path. So he went on, you know, he was retired and he was dedicating more to spiritual practice. But he saw it was becoming an obstacle. The home was becoming an obstacle to his spiritual practice. He had books, scriptures, but they went missing. And Prabhupada suspected his wife could have taken the books and sold them just to buy some biscuits or something. So anyway, he thought also about the message of the scriptures 
And there's a verse in the scriptures which says, Lord Krishna says, when I am very merciful to someone, I take everything away from them. In that helpless condition, then they surrender to me. So Prabhupada thought, he said, this is what's happening to me. That Krishna took away my opulence because initially he was thinking, I will make money and give it to my Guru Maharaj. But the business failed. So his plan to give money didn't work out. So Krishna wanted something else. Krishna didn't want him to just make money. Krishna wanted him to preach. He wanted him to write books and to preach. So Prabhupada understood that this is the direction of Krishna and it's confirmed in the scriptures and it was confirmed by his god brothers also. They all told him, you're doing the right thing. So Prabhupada left home and went to Vrindavan. That is successful family life. When you move on, when you move on out of the family life into the detached family and then renounce. That is successful. That's the successful life. So Prabhupada's life was successful. He went on and he preached Krishna consciousness. Sometimes his son would come, sometimes he would meet his son, the youngest son would come and meet him. But he wouldn't go back to the wife, that's not allowed. Okay? Yes? Um, in Malaysia, we face up issues that that is the biggest race, which Malay, the Malay race, is the biggest uh, population in Malaysia. We we get a program, go to the program, but this Malay race, they are not allowed to change their religion. They are born, they really have to be Islam. But the problem is, we are not allowed them to give Krishna conscious to them. If we give them this, we will be taught. What do we do? I will share with them Krishna conscious so we may be taught them. And each one will be this, this, this. So, There's so many other people besides the Malays, preach to the other people. You have so many Chinese here. Malays are more many, but Chinese are more than the Indian. You preach to the Chinese. You have so many Chinese there, not devotees. Preach to them. Why you worry about the Malays? We want to be, we want to, you don't want to endanger the society. Can I give Chinese books? Uh, these, these spiritual books to the library, to, 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 to uh, the Chinese schools. Yeah. Why not? Uh, no regulation, no spiritual books. Oh, no spiritual books. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So don't don't put them in the school. Go to their home. You don't need to go. You have to find things which, which you can do. You can put them in the school, but there's no law that says you cannot put it in their home. Go to their home. You can give it in the street. Right? Eh? Yeah. Thus, Shia Papa said, one man can have two wives. So how to understand? One man can have two wives. About this, how to understand? Okay. What Shia Papa said. What did he say? One man can have two wives. One man cannot have two wives. You can. can. One man can have two wives. Yes, Sula Papa said in his class of how to understand. Yeah, that's it. Well, you have to consider the, the law. What is the law? In some countries, they allow. In some countries, they allow. Like here, in, in Islam society, many. Muslim people, they may have more than one wife. Four wives. You can have four wives. But they have to get permission from the first wife before they can take the second wife. They have to get the permission from the first wife. If she agrees, all right, you can have another wife. And then they can take second wife. We had the one, there was a one family in Bahá'u in Baha, we had the, the man next door, they said he had eight wives. He was a Tamilian, and he had eight wives, and they all lived together. They all lived in the one house. He died, you know, he did not, but he had eight wives. And you see in the bit, Vasu, they had 16 wives. Krishna's father, Vasu, he had 16 wives. So, if a man is qualified, today you don't get many qualified men. They have to be qualified, not only in their behavior, but in money also. They have to be able to maintain. They have to be able to look after all the wives. Krishna provided a palace for each and every wife. He had a wife, for, he had a palace for each one and he could live with each one of them all the time. You, you don't get a man who can live with all the wives at one time, but Krishna could do that. So yes, Prabhupada said, actually if a man can have more than one wife, it's good because that means more men are free to be sannyasis and brahmacharis. Right? And the, the, the man can take, because women need a husband, women should be married. The girls need to have somebody to take care of them. They need to be protected. They may not, they may say, no, I don't want husband, but they should be looked after. They should be taken care of. So the husband is supposed to, because when they're young, with the father. But as they grow up, the father's gone, the husband should be taking care of them. So a man has, can have two wives, he can take care of them. If he can take care of the two wives, then, but it should be with the permission of the first wife. It should, yeah, okay, you take another one. You know, I don't mind, I'm tired of you anyway, you know. <laughs> And when they, when they feel like it, they come back to the first wife, you know. So they have, to be, they have to be responsible that they will take care. But it's not allowed in countries, some countries. In, in America, in Europe, you're not allowed to do that. But in some country, Arab countries, they allow Islamic law, they allow it. The man will have more than one wife. 
Uh, what the devotee can do and raise? Prabhupada said no. Although in the culture it was there in the past, but he didn't approve it today. He didn't approve it. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jaya, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jaya.